Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the International Launchpad session. I am joined this afternoon by Valerie Hannon, and she is presenting her new book, Thrive, The Purpose of Schools in a Changing World. We're going to see a short video from Valerie, and then she'll be joining us afterwards with some of her colleagues and the Learning Planet team. Thank you. Hello, I'm Valerie Hannon. Um, this short video is part of the launch activities for a new book, which I have written with my colleague, Amelia Peterson. It's called Thrive, um, The Purpose of Schools in a Changing World. Um, thank you for watching the video. We are really delighted to be launching the book at this time because we think that it has a real contribution to make to the ongoing debate about the future of education post-COVID. Um, it's new in the sense that this is an enlarged and extended edition, but did appear in an earlier edition back in 2017. Um, we believe that the ideas more than stand up and that the conditions that we're now facing mean that it's even more imperative to create a debate around them. W why do we think that? We wrote the book because we believe that we won't get the necessary changes in education and in the nature of schooling unless we ask some very fundamental questions about what schools are for. We wanted to go a level above the questions which usually get asked about curriculum and pedagogy and assessment and ask very, very fundamental questions about the purposes of mass public education in the new conditions. By the new conditions, of course, we mean those of the new century, where we face not just pandemics and disruption of all sorts, but are very profound challenges to the nature of humanity itself. So the beginning of the book looks at what we call three pivot points or points of inflection in human history, where things are starting to come together in terms of our relationship to the planet, our relationship to technology, and our relationship to ourselves, which have never been faced by our species before. And we argue that the purpose of education now needs to throw off old ideas about what success really was. And we suggest that the new purpose of schools should be about learning to thrive in a transforming world because the world is genuinely transforming and transforming very, very fast. And we suggest the notion of thriving to get away from old assumptions about what success is. It's partly a biological metaphor, but we point out that if we are to thrive, actually it needs to happen at four utterly interrelated levels. We need to thrive in terms of our relationship with the planet and our environment, we need to thrive in societal terms. We need to thrive in our interpersonal relationships. And finally, of course, we need to thrive as individuals, intrapersonally. And these four are totally interconnected. And learning to thrive at each level, we argue, is what schools ought to be teaching kids to do. Not in the periphery, not at, as a nice to have, but absolutely central to their efforts. This is not about the old tired debate about skills versus knowledge, it entails both. It is a debate about what needs to be central when we think about what needs to be taught and how it needs to be taught and how it's assessed. So the book makes an argument about what thriving looks like at those four levels. It's not just about opinion, we have good evidence about, say, what thriving societies look like and what constitutes them. And out of those debates, what we have derived is a set of new learning goals. Learning goals that we hope educators and most of all system leaders, either professional or political, will take really seriously. Our aim is to change the nature of the debate, or at least to contribute to a changed debate. Because we think the old one is tired, and is not serving our needs and the purposes of young people. If we can get a different kind of narrative about education, we will, we argue, move to a point where different approaches to teaching and learning 
can flourish and take root. But this is not just a theoretical debate. So the book also cites multiple examples of extraordinary innovation across the world in which educators genuinely are addressing these new goals. And we've done this in order to give practitioners and system leaders the confidence that this is not just some theoretical fantasy, but rather innovators working as educators around the world are making it happen, but they need the support of systems and they need to stop being the beautiful exceptions and start to be part of the new paradigm which we are all wanting to copy and create. So I hope you might take a look at the book. It's available from February 2021 through all the usual channels and we'd love to engage with you in a debate about its, prop its propositions, its theses and where we go from here. Thanks for listening. Good afternoon again, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this short conversation between Learning Planet and the Global Education Leaders Partnership, which marks the start of the official collaboration between these two great organizations. I'm joined by Valerie Hannon, who you've just heard from as she launched her most recent book, Thrive. And she is joined by Anthony Mackey and Michael Stevenson from the Global Education Leaders Partnership, or GELP, and Gail Mangi, the CREES Director of Development and International Relations, and part of Learning Planet too. So let's start with Learning Planet, which is an open alliance with a cause dedicated to learning stakeholders and communities whose mission is to gather players from around the world in order to identify, celebrate, enhance, and scale up educational solutions towards sustainable futures that ensure the respect, well-being, and fulfillment of oneself, the others, and the planet. I believe they have recently relaunched their charter and I'd like to invite them to tell us a little bit about this. So Gail, over to you. Uh, yeah, thanks, Leonora. Um, it's, it's a great pleasure to be here and to uh, to hear that uh, Valerie is, is is issuing a new book. Uh, I think thrive. That, I mean, the, the topic of the of the flourishing is is and the thriving of people is just presumably the most important that that we we have today. Uh, when, when we see the challenges that we, I mean, over the last two days, what we have heard again and again and again is that uh, education is the central key uh, uh, for for the for for humanity in uh, when we see the the problems that we are facing, but. Uh, more than education, it's about learning. It's about the transformation of people, and it's about how we change the system so that people can actually transform. And so she uh, elo eloquently put uh, put that together, and, and I'm sure that uh, this book perfectly reflects uh, uh, what what we are all. Uh, uh, aiming for uh, some some guidelines and some references and some help to find uh, how we can actually transform the systems so that they can benefit uh, uh, the people, our kids, uh, ourselves, uh, and mankind. And so it's it's perfectly aligned with what we're trying to do as Learning Planet. Um, because the, what is uh, amazing to see is that on one side we have so many problems uh, and so uh, and and systems that are so obsolete, and on the other side you see so many people that are engaged in trying to find other ways. To to, uh, to 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 teach and learn, um, and and I think there is something very profound in the fact that uh, we are all dealing with that. We are all uh, human beings. We are all uh, uh, flourishing through uh, through learning. Uh, we need to uh, know thyself. We need to uh, take care of the others. We need to uh, to see uh, how we can help and care about the others. This is the most nurturing thing that we can do. Uh, science is 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 showing that happiness is essentially composed of how you how you can work with with uh, uh, how in peace you are with yourself, how many connections you have, and how connected you are with the planet and with nature in general. So I think there is something extremely profound that as uh, that uh, that and that there is a gap between uh, <laughs> a gap. There is uh, uh, an abyss an abysm between uh, where we are uh, as a as a trajectory for a civilization and where we should be as human being for, for, for flourishing. So uh, uh, the, uh, the, the book of Valerie, the, uh, the actions of GELP, uh, the, uh, the aim of Learning Planet, I think we are all about the same thing, which is how do we reconnect uh, to ourselves, others and the planet? And I'm super, uh, uh, I'm, I'm personally super happy to have, uh, to be part of that panel and to be part of, of that event for over Two days we have seen so many people that are you know trying to go into the same direction and this is really thrilling
So it sounds like the Learning Planet has been set up as a knowledge hub and uh, they've started some conversations with GELP and we'd love to hear a little bit more about what those conversations have, uh, have held. Valerie, why don't you? Uh, why don't you, you, you yeah, yeah we're, we're all waiting for each other there. We are such a polite okay. group. But Valerie, go I'm, first. Sure, okay, I'm happy to kick off. Well, before we, sorry about the sun in my eyes, it makes me look very illuminated, but there you are. Um, I'll sit back. Um, before we get on the, to the potential of the partnership, maybe a little bit about, of history about us, which is that the Global Education Leaders Partnership has been going for over a decade now. So we're kind of old in this fairly new field. And we've had three distinguishing factors, Hello. I think, or features. I'm Barry Hannan. The first uh, is that we were keen to build the capacity of system leaders. And we were very conscious that a lot of work was being done with school leaders, with teachers, with great pioneers in this field. But if you were a system leader um, working in the public sector, where did you go to start to grapple with the big ideas about paradigm shift? Where did you go to have honest conversations about that without fear of being kind of ridiculed very publicly in the press? And we wanted to create a safe space where system leaders could come together to discuss these issues. So that was the first marker, I think. The second thing is talking about system. So of course we had to take into account what new institutions looked like and informal settings for learning, but we were also wanting to think big about systems. And increasingly as time has gone on, and as Michael will no doubt um, say a bit about, we started to think ecosystem. So beyond formal systems and thinking about all community assets and um, potential stakeholders and, and capabilities getting involved. So the shift from system to ecosystem and what's involved in leading them has been a second focus. And then I think the third um, thing that maybe I should have started with actually is where Gael was, which is around, we're really interested in transformation. Um, the, the gap, the, the abyss, as Gael put it, between what currently is and what needs to be is huge. So we're not just talking about improvements of existing systems or even just turning them to, into better connected ecosystems, but driving towards very, very different kinds of objectives thriving and human flourishing, and particularly looking at the future of the planet on that putting those central. But transformation of how we teach, what the selection of choices are around curriculum, and particularly how those things are assessed. So it's a transformative agenda for system leaders. So that's a bit of our history. And we've been convening now for 10 years. And maybe Tony wants to say a bit about where we've got to. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd just add then um, three extra points. Uh, it's been a fantastic journey. I mean, we've had um, we've had between fifteen and twenty jurisdictions or geographies uh, involved uh, over this period of time, and that's been global north and global south. And initially, we began with teams of system leaders, but it's broadened uh, to include a whole range of of uh, leaders, but leaders who see, as Valerie has pointed out, the importance of redesigning the system. Uh, I might say, uh, the first one I'll make, though, is that we, we began with a kind of split screen, interesting tension that uh, leaders need to handle both the way in which they are currently working within a system while they're redesigning it simultaneously in a transformational sense. And that's actually quite challenging, but at least we acknowledge that. But as Valerie's pointed out, we're on the transformation side of this work. Second, uh, we recognise there are a lot of players and um, learning is everybody's business. And so we've been keen to connect, uh, obviously, not just with those who are involved in formal education at every level, uh, from the earliest years through to further and higher education, uh, but obviously to employers, to communities, to uh, trade unions, uh, to a multiplicity of players who ultimately legitimize or authorize actually the environment in which you're working. So it's been vital that we've made those connections that we have in each of our jurisdictions as we've moved over the last decade and convened in each other's places that we've made those connections. Um, the third thing I'd say is that we are very clear you can't do this work unless you engage in the politics of education. Uh, this is not something where in fact you try and do it beside or bypassing uh, those who are currently in positions of power 
And I mean, in that sense, not just socialized power, but uh, positions of being elected uh, to uh, positions within government. And they, of course, see themselves as being uh, policy makers. And we are saying, fine, but you'll need to share that responsibility. Um, and there's a real sense in which we've looked at how you can think again about leadership and governance of systems and ecosystems. That's absolutely vital. Uh, not in any sense uh, uh, thinking that you can do this without dealing with the politics, rather embracing the politics of education, but broadening it to have uh, a greater level of participation. So I'll just add those three dimensions to Valerie's uh, overview of, uh, of the GELP work. Thank you very much, both of you. So we've heard a little bit then about the, the history of the Burning Planet and about GELP. Um, perhaps it would be interesting to hear from Michael about your aspirations for the next few years. Thank you, Leonora. I'd love to. Um, I think uh, GELP has always been quite agile, uh, rather as Valerie and um, Antonia have been saying, always happy to think um, the latest thoughts about what to do next. And we have thought quite hard over the last year. Uh, and it's that that's led us partly to this exciting partnership with Learning Planet, which we know will um, do extraordinary things in terms of not just moving forward the GELP project, but in association with so many other partners. But I think there are three things that we want to focus on over the next year or two. Um, one is to understand the very latest thinking around education transformation. We know that it begins excitingly with a restating of the purposes of learning. That's happening everywhere and it's very important and we want to be part of it. Um, uh, but there are many routes to transformation um, uh, and uh, the ecosystemic approach that both Valerie and Tony have talked about is only one. Um, we want to be clear why from time to time the ecosystem way forward is right, what it gets you and how you do it. So that's one big thing I think, um, mapping ecosystem, uh, mapping transformation and understanding the role of ecosystems in that. The second um, is knowing that you can have the best ideas in the world. And unless you're really sharp and determined in terms of how you move them forward and persuade people, you'll be lost. So what are the routes to mobilizing political and public support for these transformation ideas that we have? Uh, that's incredibly important. Um, it, if there is to be change, it will not be because somebody sitting in the Department of Education in the mainstream ordains it, the main street, but rather because learners want it and parents and employers and teachers. Finally, I think we want to really come to grips with where transformational change is actually happening on the ground. And we're very interested at the moment in some of the movements that are happening in the north of England to try and level up these lost communities via ecosystemic change. So can we understand the dynamics of disadvantage? Can we uh, get a grip on the kind of big ideas that they have for bringing together, for example, employer and uh, educator partnerships orchestrated by new universities? And can we see some of the emerging templates for ecosystemic change around the world? Um, well, thanks, Michael uh, and, and Tony Valeri. I mean, this is uh, everything that you said uh, uh, resonates a lot here. And 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 I, if uh, if anything, I think at the Learning Planet, what we are trying to do is to uh, uh, create a middle ground, something. Uh, so, for those of you that are not familiar with this uh, with this concept, a middle ground is a is a structure. I mean, is a place that uh, connects the underground and the upper ground, and so. Uh, for anything which has to do with innovation, especially at scale, we need some sort of middle ground. We need a place where you, we connect to the ground, and I and I echo what you what you're saying. Uh, we need to understand what's happening on the ground, what the what 
the scientists are saying, what the entrepreneurs are doing, what the social entrepreneurs are creating, and all those new models, all those seeds of change that can be uh, that can be a different level of, of growth. And some of them are already uh, flourishing uh, on, on on the large scale, like uh, like Kieran, for instance, and others are are, are very confidential and small. Uh, and so those those innovation uh, they cannot uh, flourish and they cannot scale if they are not connected to the upper ground, to the policymakers, to the administrations, to the organizations, uh, institutions that have, that's their mandate, that's their know-how. They know how to take something and scale it and, and, and make it replicate and study how to assess it, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think uh, as we are coming from Cree, we are coming from the scientific and social entrepreneur side and we are a very small structure and we like to be very agile and connect and create things. But what we miss is this ability to think uh, on a large scale and connect to policymaking and connect to institution uh, to, so that we can we can create those bridges everywhere so that we would be much more powerful and 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 for us it's a fantastic opportunity uh, uh, engaging with with you and and having help on board uh, with the learning planet that gives uh, that's that's that that create for us uh, this uh, this ground uh, so that we can uh, connect with the institutions we can connect with the establishment connect with policymaking and make uh, uh, everyone uh, 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 much stronger when we uh, when we propose that we need a radical transformation radical collaboration radical change these are very strong words and if you don't have all the skills and all the manpower to uh, behind it just doesn't work and so i think we help each other this way by reinforcing our legitimacy because it's not just a bunch of uh, hip at cree or uh, or a bunch of people at gelp it's uh, there is a lot of bunches and so when you look at all the bunches behind blending planet then you start to see that this is a movement and that's that's really wonderful. Thank you, Gail. It would be lovely to hear from Tony a little bit more about uh, these links and perhaps um, a bit more concretely what the partnership would look like for both organizations. Yeah, well, I love the, the concept of the middle ground, the connecting, uh, I think of our work is a, a really powerful way to, to tell the story. But for me, there's a sense in which uh, both organizations have been engaged in and will be engaged in thought leadership, in convening power, uh, which includes obviously building our networks and in advocacy. That's pretty clear that we come together and the fertilization of both organizations gives greater power to that work. But Gail, I think you're right to say that uh, we will get greater reach and spread uh, as you say, the connecting power of the middle ground uh, as a result of the two organisations working uh, together, the two movements, as it were, uh, working together, particularly because I think of the learning planet's reach globally and the intense work, Leonora, that we have undertaken in a dozen or more jurisdictions. So I think we've got both uh, depth and breadth in the way in which we are uh, talking. And then can I say third that uh, it strikes me that um, the communities that Learning Planet brings together uh, goes beyond system leaders and GELP itself has been going beyond system leaders. But I love Gail's point about entrepreneurs. I was saying earlier that it's learning is everybody's business. And that is exactly what we are trying to do. We're trying now to ensure that we reach out to practitioners, to policy makers, to members of communities, to young people, to entrepreneurs, and obviously to government, and to bring this work together in a really powerful way. What I really think we can do is we can accelerate our work, we can enlarge our work, and we can amplify our work, uh, which is not a bad relationship to have. Thank you. And this goes back uh, to what you were talking about earlier, the capacity building for ecosystem leaders, which I know is a, a speciality of GELP. I'm aware we don't have much longer today to talk to each other, but I'd love to hear perhaps from Michael and Valerie, just a little bit more about your work in that area. Valerie. Well, I think Tony covered the constituent parts, really. I mean, it's attempting to bring to the notice of um, busy people in very senior roles often, whether that's within systems or of um, uh, or businesses or uh, large academic institutions, the most interesting and innovative work that's going around globally. So one of our techniques always is to do a big scan of all the most interesting innovations in focused areas 
<clears throat> and attempt to bring that to their attention in a very succinct um, uh, synopsis so that you know people can get to grips with it quickly. And that, we used to have a maxim like, we'll read it so you don't have to. Um, secondly, I think um, giving people the tools for interrogating that in ways which are perhaps a little bit less conventional. So the old means of evaluation, which would be you know, a five year study in a university and you wait six years to have anything out of it. And anyway, then the bus has moved on. Um, we wanted something which was a bit more immediate, um, which was a bit more generative. And so trying to get a sense of where are the promising innovations where are the real sense, uh, where are the real spaces where important things are happening that one might take up and adapt or adopt? That's the second thing. And then thirdly, um, and this was a, an inspiration from Michael really, getting for system leaders a really strategic sense of what a roadmap for transformation might look like in their context. And we've had teams working with us from Finland, from South Korea, um, to Brazil, to South, I mean, America, I mean, all over, many, um, I think five or six of um, American states, we always call a jurisdiction, we've used the term jurisdiction to mean that where the legal sort of regulatory system applies. So you don't talk about the US, you talk about each state because they have different um, sets of regulatory frameworks. Well, um, looking at them, we created a kind of a roadmap, which was generic, which is a kind of template for you to think about in your circumstances what are the key movements and what are the key players and what are the interdependencies that might give you a fighting chance, including the politics, going back to Tony's piece? Where does the advocacy come in? Where does the IT investment come in? Um, trying to think very strategically about how you might build a transformation roadmap. So those are the kinds of things that we do, but Michael, maybe you want to say a bit more about that. Nothing more on that. Just to say that um, I think there's one other thing that maybe will come through this historic relationship with Learning Planet. Um, as you've just said, Valerie, GELP has worked successfully in Korea, um, in Latin America, um, in Scandinavia. But I still sense that it hasn't been quite as global as we would all have liked, and that there are parts of the world that we haven't yet reached. And you know, I would say that that includes the Global South, um, Asia, Middle East and North Africa. I'd also say it involves actually the continent of Europe, where I think we could be more embedded than we have been. So I'm really hoping that as we play out these big ideas together over the next few years, it will feel completely international and global um, rather than one sector of the world. Uh, Leonora, just before uh, Gail comes in, can I just make it uh, clear that uh, those of us uh, who spend some of our time in Australia and New Zealand, and uh, we have been uh, very much part of GELP uh, and now Learning Planet, uh, we are also from the Global South. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, point I mean, taken. Thank you, Gail. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. take that point. I've known this man for 20 years and he's never said that before. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was about time, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this is great. Uh, I love the spirit. Um, and, 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 and this, so this is so much, so much exactly like what we're doing here. Uh, it goes in all kinds of ways and sometimes it's crazy. Um, so maybe, maybe to conclude, one of the things that we haven't uh, emphasized enough is that the, the, um, the, the beauty of, of creating an, an open source ecosystem where everyone is, is invited to contribute is that it's open to students and to kids. And so uh, as, as at Cree, we have built everything, we have co-constructed everything with the students uh, and we are inviting everyone to, you know, rethink how they work in terms of schools, universities with the, with the learners. Uh, this, this is gonna be a very powerful if we can create uh, uh, this sort of movement and this community of practice where we exchange on how we change uh, the learning ecosystems with the learners, because <laughs> that's, the, that's the customers uh, in a way, uh, if, uh, that's the Users, that's the learners, that the people that matters. So, so uh, the rest is uh, is is old school, uh, isn't it? So uh, that's that's really something that uh, um, make make me uh, 
make me feel uh, happy about the, the, those two days. Uh, when we look at uh, all the sessions, there are always students in the session. They are invited. It's free. Uh, imagine if you were in a, in a big education policy congress, it would be behind closed doors. So we would have those conversations, but it wouldn't be open to uh, the rest of the world. So we wouldn't have access to that. And so all, all those, uh, everything that we say will be recorded, will be on YouTube. And so maybe in six months from now or two months from now, people can, you know, read it and create have have a comment start a discussion on youtube and so that's the the goal uh, and and our next step for us is to organize those conversation uh, on on the landing planet website and beyond to help people to engage with those uh, discussions with engage with those content with those ideas and see what is it that i can do in my in my in my network in my territory in my city in my school university that are the things that will start something you know very powerful and so i'm really regretful that we are having those conversations because it's not only that we are happy to work together is that what we are doing is meaningful and it's not only meaningful for us it's it's first and foremost meaningful for everyone that can uh, build on on those uh, ideas and create something that will work for them thank you Gail, and thank you all of you for joining us today i have really enjoyed from my perspective talking to you over the last few months about this partnership and the work that you're doing and the work that you're planning to do so thank you very much for joining us to share your plans with everybody else and thank you to everybody who's attended to listen uh, and people who are joining us later to watch us on replay uh, you've heard the aspirations of gelf and learning planet you've heard their invitation to follow this new partnership and i hope that you do so it leaves, I'm, I'm left to thank our, our participants and our attendees and to encourage you to use the buttons on the left-hand side of your platform to navigate to the next session that you would like to see, which may well be the final of the Little Prince writing competition. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the festival. <laughs>